everyone, I'm back. This is Cynthia Cruzado, and I'm back for more YouTube videos. I have to talk really quietly because my grandpa is on the other side, and he's um, sleeping right now. So I'm trying to keep it as quiet as possible, so I will wake him up. Um, today I'm going to be reacting to four videos these days, but I'm not going to upload it upload them all at the same time um, because YouTube is kind of slow here on uploading so if you guys have any advice for me on how to upload things faster on YouTube that would be great um, today the first video I'm going to react is um, top 10 terrifying female mythical creatures from watchmojo.com if any of you know with what watchmojo.com is that's great and if you don't know what watchmojo.com is i'm gonna leave a link in the description down below as well as the link to the video and i'm going to be playing this for you guys and see if you like it in three two one Hathno Fury like these epic female monsters. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 terrifying female mythical creatures. For this list, we will only be looking at mythical creatures that give us nightmares, not scary goddesses like Hecate. We're also not looking at ghosts or folklore today, as those creatures will be getting their own list. Number 10, Jello, Greco-Byzantine mythology. You live your life in the open, like I did. Cool. Long ago. This bloodthirsty demon jealously attacks women who have what she never will, children. Jello is very particular about who she feeds on, preferring virgins, pregnant women, or women with babies. And when she's found an appropriate girl, she is merciless. Similar to a vampire, Jello sinks her talons into them and then sucks their blood. <laughs> The female demon causes infertility, miscarriage, or the death of infant children. Perhaps even worse, she can possess women and force them to murder children. Oh. She doesn't attack only women either, but sometimes goes after the children themselves, especially children who've been left unattended. That's cool. Number 9. Rusalki. Slavic mythology. What Rusalka Ooh. is about is a water spirit or sprite, which the Czech term for such a creature is a Rusalka. These pale, beautiful creatures are the spirits of women who died by drowning, either by their own hand or someone else's. Largely an aquatic people, Rusalki are known to come crawling out at night to climb trees and comb their long, wet hair. That would be creepy enough on its own, but they also have a dangerous habit of luring men into the water and drowning them. <laughs> To make matters worse, they like to laugh and tickle people. Sure, that probably doesn't sound so bad, but most tickle sessions aren't as fatal as these. Oh, oh my god, I can't believe it. <laughs> Number eight, Scylla, Greek mythology. The Scylla and Charybdis. I could actually the Odyssey for one use of four nightmare chapters. I could actually use this for so stories. Immortal with a six pack of dog heads around her belt line, plus a cat tail and 12 tentacles, Scylla isn't exactly something you'd want to see when you're kayaking. Dogheads aside, she has quite the living arrangement. Scylla lives in a cave on one side of the narrow strait of Messina, directly across from her partner in crime, Charybdis, and each is prone to eating any sailor who gets too close, giving birth to the phrase between Scylla and Charybdis, which basically means between a rock and a hard place. If you do manage to kill Scylla, don't stick around too long to celebrate, because her old man, the sea god Forcus, will come and bring her back to life. That is Scylla, insatiable for blood. She lurks in the shadow, hoping to fill her belly. Number seven, Shivo Jonah, Slavic mythology. These supernatural kidnappers live in the trees and bushes near water and take the form oh, of seen, red hat wearing old women. I think I've seen this in supernatural. Stealing newborn babies I've and seen replacing this in them with their own children, called changelings. Fortunately, there are very specific ways to protect infants from being snatched. For one, it's important to never wash your baby's diapers at nighttime. Otherwise, the swamp demon might pull the old switcheroo. 
What's wrong, Mommy? Additionally, keep your child safe by keeping them out of the moonlight, having them wear a red hat, and tying a red ribbon around their hand. Some versions of the myth say that Jivojana are more than just kidnappers, though. Supposedly, they can also shapeshift into beautiful young nymphs in order to, you guessed it, seduce and kill young men. <laughs> Number six, Lamia, Greek mythology. Yeah, no Lamia. Lamia. I think I've heard of it. Lamia? That's a monster. Juices hearts, chugs the blood. Lamia wasn't always a monster. She was once the queen of Libya in a blissful affair with Zeus, the king of the gods. Zeus's wife Hera, of course, found out, and as she's wont to do, exacted revenge by killing Lamia's children, and in an ironic twist, turning Lamia into a child-killing savage. Usually depicted as having snake-like features, Lamia also has the ability to remove her eyes from her face and then put them back again. Although some say this trick was a gift from a pitying Zeus, since Hera cursed her to never close them. Some myths chalk Lamia's new look up to Hera's revenge, but Homer's Odyssey makes the claim it was a genetic trait from her mother, Hecate. She is the bearer of the demon child. Beware, God then. Number 5. Harpies. Greek and Roman Ooh. mythology. Harpy. From the Latin harpia. The ancient Greeks believed they were winged death spirits. Is that a TV show? Woman half beast. These monsters, the spirits of wind, have the face of a beautiful woman, but the body of a fierce bird. Their main goal in life is to steal food from people and leave them to starve. In other cases, they swoop down and carry evildoers off to be tortured. How ironic. Vicious and sadistic, they live on the Strophades Islands, waiting for the chance to snatch something up. Harpies have been known to fill various terrifying roles in myth. On the Greek side, at Zeus's command, they kept King Phineas captive on an island and never allowed him to eat, whereas the Romans described them as stealing an entire feast from the Trojans, prophesying that the group would starve. And for good measure, they placed me here to be tormented by hunger and harpies. Number four, Banshees, Irish mythology. Let's see. It's Gaelic for Banshee. Irish folklore. A creature whose scream warns of imminent death. Oh, oh. The name Banshee comes from the Gaelic for Woman of the Mounds, referring to their preferred living quarters on the mounds of the Irish terrain. Recognized by their long, messy hair yes. and fondness for green or red attire, the Banshee can go from one end of the beauty spectrum to the other at will. Legends claim they are the ghosts of women who either died while giving birth or were murdered and have a piercing voice to warn of imminent death. <laughs> Though the Banshee is identified in Irish myth, both Scottish and Welsh folklore have similar figures as well, with wonderful names like the Hag of the Mist. God, no, no, I know how it sounds, but basically it means that you can sense when someone's close to death. Number three, Furies, a.k.a. Erinys, Greek mythology. The Furies are deities of vengeance. Their tears ran to blood and they had snakes for hair. If there was a crime that had gone Whoa. unpunished, the Furies do the punishing. Also known as Furies, or Dere in Roman myth, Aranes are demons out to exact revenge. Living in Erebus, part of the underworld, Aranes are a hodgepodge of all things scary. They've got hair made of snakes, the wings of a bat, and a dog's head, with bloodshot and raving eyes. As terrifying as they may be to look at, they'd be even worse to be around, since they have a reputation for lashing people to death with brass-studded whips. In the set of Greek tragedies, the Oresteia, the goddess Athena makes them guardians of righteousness rather than retribution. These are the Furies. They do not strike without being summoned. But rest assured that they defend justice with just as much fury. <laughs> Number two, Corina, Arabian mythology. That's a Corina. Cool. I haven't seen one of these outside of Egypt before. These astoundingly beautiful demons appear in dreams in order to have sex with human men. That might not sound terrifying, but the men have no choice in the matter, and a Corina sustains herself by sucking energy from her victims. Like in a other succubus. words, they literally feed on sex, and a Corina can drain her victims to exhaustion or even death. <laughs> to make matters worse, they're invisible, so you can never see them coming, unless you're blessed with clairvoyance. Even then, you won't see a Corina for the monster she is. Instead, she'll appear in the form of a domestic animal, like a cat or a dog. You know, a Corina's feeding signature is similar to that of a succubus. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few Tell honorable mentions. Siren. Number one, Medusa. It has to be Medusa. Mythology. Temptation to look at me is to resist 
When it comes to Medusa, looks really can kill. With snakes for hair and a gaze that turns mortals to stone, she is the most famous of three winged sisters called the Gorgon. Eventually, the hero Perseus beheaded her with the help of four of the Greek gods. But she was so powerful that even after she was killed, she had the power to turn anyone to stone with just one look into her dead eyes. Her head was eventually given to Athena, who put it on her shield to ward off evil. It just goes to show that even in death, Medusa remains one of the most dangerous creatures in Greek mythology. Oh. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite female mythical creature? For more legendary top 10 For a second, gaming, she be looked sure like an undecipher. I don't know how to pronounce her name. Awesome. Well, that was kind of interesting. I actually liked the video. Um, the reason why I chose to react to this video is because I want to learn more about mythology. I'm actually writing. I'm actually a writer. Um, well, um, practicing writing. I'm practicing writing. I like fantasy and horror. Um, that's why I chose to react to this video first, and so far it's actually pretty good. Um, um, right now I'm going to react to the second video, um, which is, let me see, five banned YouTubers you can't watch anymore. Um, I don't know what that's about, so I'm going to have to watch it. Um, so, thanks for watching the first video. And um, yeah, to the second video. <laughs> I'm bad at this, really. <laughs>